Hello and welcome to Thriving Together. Uh, my name is Sue Crowley and I'm your host today and we are going to be talking about accessory dwelling units. It's a timely topic because uh, the governor just signed into law a over five billion dollar uh, Law, housing that, bond bill, housing bond bill that allows um, allows accessory dwelling units, and so we'll be develop, delving into that a bit. And my guest today is Adeline Matten, and she is representing North Shore Realty Association. Welcome, Adeline. Thanks. <laughs> and uh, let's just start out. I know we have a lot to unpack here today, but yeah. um, tell me a little bit about the North Shore Realty Association, and you know what what it does and how this housing bill and these accessory dwelling units referred to often as ADUs fit in fit into you know the purpose of that organization. Sure. Sure. So thanks for having me. You're North Shore Realtors is a local trade organization. Um, we there are many throughout the state. We fall under the Massachusetts Association of Realtors reaching up to the National Association of Realtors. It is a private organization, trade organization. We are one of the largest lobbyists, and the goal is to protect housing, housing rights of people in the communities. Mm -hmm. And the housing bond bill is one that was very supported by the Massachusetts Association okay. of Realtors. Mm -hmm. Locally, we have many realtors throughout um, parts of Essex County, and um, a realtor is a little bit different than just a real estate agent. We abide by a higher level of ethics. Okay. Okay. Well, very good. And so, um, you know, our, uh, the people that are watching are probably mostly older adults. Yep. And so let's, let's talk a little bit. What the, what the bill says or what the law says is allows for accessory dwelling units to be built by right in single-family zoning districts in all communities yes. of Massachusetts. Yeah. So do you have a per perspective on how this is something that could be helpful to older adults? Sure. I mean, it's hopefully it's going to bring in about 8,000 additional housing units as the time goes by. It is a great opportunity for seniors living in their home who don't want to leave their home, who want to age in place. It allows them to have an accessory dwelling unit either for them to move into, maybe it's single level, smaller unit, downsizing, bring family into the house. It does not have to be family. They can also rent it and it will allow for rental income. Uh -huh. So it helps paying for the taxes uh -huh. okay. and all the other bills. And so if there are, you know, caregiving issues for an older adult, then it could be family members or it could be uh, somebody who's more professional. Yes. Absolutely. Okay. Well, that sounds really pretty good. Yeah. So, um, so what uh, what is this built by right business? That's very <laughs> that was pretty confusing so, to me. So it's so first, let me say that Beverly has put into place before this a pretty a, a very good ADU policy. So the, it does change it a little bit. Hopefully, eliminates uh, eliminates more restrictions, but by right. So single family zoning across state, there are still requirements. If you're going to put a freestanding building there, you have to have the setbacks. You can't just do anything you want. And what is the setback? The setback would be the distance between a neighbor's property okay. line, which will differ okay. for zoning town to town, you know, town to town. Um, but it gives you opportunities to perhaps do a freestanding unit, convert a garage above a garage, a basement, an attic, or even carve out a portion of your house. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. So that is the right. But you can't, you still need to go through the building department. You still need to get the permits that are needed to do it within the, mm -hmm. you know, the, the requirements. Mm -hmm. um, but you don't have to go in front of the zoning, bo zoning board of appeals, um, approvals. You don't need to get special permission from the city council. That's the buy right part. Okay. So it's, it makes it a little bit easier. Yes. So if you meet all the other stipulations, there are then there still requirements you need to, then, to meet. Yeah. Yes, absolutely. Okay. okay, interesting. All right. And so there are, you mentioned, you know, there are different types yeah. of, uh, of ADUs. Yep. There are the ones that are 
within the house itself. Correct. And and the requirements for those are it's separate separate entrance it has to have a it has to have an entrance that's not on the front of the property so it's not going to appear that it's a two family home and it's indeed not a two family home it's not anything that you can mm. sell off as a condo if you no uh -huh. longer want there so it's still a single va family property with the ADU also known as an in-law you know okay many times referred to as that or granny flat a granny I've heard. flat yep yeah, i think that that's a term that's been used uh -huh. um, so there's also some restrictions which will keep the character of the neighborhoods. Um, it cannot be, it has to be the lesser of 1,000 square feet in no more than 50% of your home. So the lesser of either. So if you have a 1,200 square foot home, you can only have a 600 square foot ADU. So it's the lesser of each. So there, okay. you know, those are... Okay. Some okay. some restrictions that I think will protect the character of many uh -huh. the single family uh -huh. neighborhoods. Okay. And its own kitchen. Its own kitchen, its, own, its bath. own bath, correct. Okay. And then the size, you know, kind of kind of restrictions. So there's the in house one. Yes. And then there's the freestanding. Yeah. We call it yeah, the freestanding. Separate, yeah, one. separate separate building. Okay. Which could be an apartment over a garage. We have a lot of split-level homes, raised ranch homes. A lot of times I've oh. seen over the years you go into these properties and they have two kitchens, you know, just, just uh -huh. for family living there. Yeah. But it's a good opportunity. I mean, that would be a cost-effective way to implement a, an ADU in one of those style properties. Mm -hmm. The freestanding, standalone buildings, that's going to be expensive. How expensive? Well, I mean, it depends. Going to depend all, on the it, size. It's all going to depend on the size. But you own the land, so uh -huh. you're not buying. You know, paying for the land cost. But to construct could be upward of three hundred thousand uh -huh. dollars. And now you can't. You know, I, I, I'm, I'm, I've been kind of attracted to the tiny house movement. Yes. You yeah. know, because it's pretty fun to yeah. fun to watch and consider. Whether you could do, you could do something like that, but does that those? Of course, that would be a, a freestanding structure, a tiny oh, home. Okay. As long as the size meets and the setbacks are in place, then sure, you could do a tiny you home. Could, okay. Okay. So it doesn't matter if it's got wheels or not. Well, that would be that would be a. That would not be a home. That yeah. would be more of, mm. you know, if it's a, an RV, are you thinking an RV well, or yeah. a manufactured home? Well, I mean, a lot of those, I'm just trying to think about those tiny homes. Oh. They, some of them are on yeah. wheels, I think. I mean, that would be right. something that, we, that somebody would have to speak to the building department yeah. about individually, yeah. town I mean, by town. But you could, I mean, you could just get one of those houses and remove the wheels and yeah. set it on a yeah. cement. Yeah, a maybe. slab. Yeah, a cement slab. And that might be less expensive. Yeah, I don't know. Depending. Oh, well, I've seen some of those, yeah. and they're awfully yeah. cute, and, and they do have a price tag. But yeah. it's still a more affordable option yeah. for many people. Yeah. So yeah. it really comes down to your budget and what you're looking for, and again, what what each community uh -huh. is going to uh -huh. allow for that. So, have you noticed? Are there a lot of ADUs in? The North Shore or Beverly area? There's, you know, I can't speak to the numbers, but there, the towns are, you know, are just recently updating the ADU laws. Um, previously, it had to be a family member living there. Now they're saying that you can rent them. Now you have the right to rent them. So that makes a, a lot of difference. Mm -hmm. Like anything, there's sometimes they're out there and they're not permitted. It, uh -huh. And now people will be, you know, going through the steps to be able uh -huh. to rent it. Uh -huh. um, one of the rules I know in Beverly is that the homeowner has to live in one of the units. So you can't rent them both. You must occupy one of okay, the so units. So that's, that's, that's a requirement right now. That's a requirement and right now. And this law doesn't do anything to supersede that. I do not believe that it does. You, I, I suppose that's, that's the issue. We're kind of probably in this flux where we've got this law and then there are the local ordinances yeah. and how do they fit together and, yeah. you know, it probably has some gray areas probably have to be uh, yeah. ironed out, and, so and to speak. And the intent of the law is to increase housing. Uh-huh. 
Which is needed. We have uh -huh. a housing shortage. I think that the last number I heard was over 200,000 in, in a shortage of homes across yeah. Massachusetts. Yeah. That's a lot of yeah. homes. Yeah. And if they're only predicting 8,000 over the next few years, that doesn't put a big dent in it, really. Yeah. It still leaves us with a housing shortage. Mm -hmm. So we find ourselves at a place where we just need housing, any kind of housing, it, you know, be it small developments, be it big homes and developments. Uh -huh. Any housing built increases the the number of homes that can you know people can occupy and perhaps you know somebody moving out of a small condo into a larger home now that makes their condo available mm -hmm. so you know we work together to, yeah. to find you a condo yeah. Yeah, so did. there wasn't a lot out there uh -huh. so we you know a lot of people are staying in their homes because they have no place to go yeah. they want a bigger home uh -huh. which would free up a smaller home for maybe a starting family yeah yeah so. Okay. Well, and then what about, you know, there, there's a whole not in my backyard. Nimbyism, yes. N it is strong. What do you call it? Nim Nimbyism. Nimbyism. <laughs> okay. What, what, what are the issues there? I mean, people are worried about the character of, of their course. neighborhood. They're worried about traffic. Yeah. They're worried about parking. So there does ha there is um, you know rules in place that you do need to have at least one car parking for the ADU. So the parking should that should resolve that. Mm -hmm. As I said, you you can't have two front doors. They're not looking uh -huh. like multifamily homes. It really has to blend into you know a single family home with an accessory dwelling. Mm -hmm. There is the requirements for the size. So you're not building a huge structure twice the size of your yeah, house or, in your backyard. Yes, four stories no, with, you know. Yeah, that's not happening. Ten cars and yeah. all that. Yeah. So that should maintain the, the character uh -huh. of these single uh -huh. family homes. And, uh -huh. you know, it's a good question. Uh-huh. Uh -huh. Well, yeah, so, so where does that figure come from, the possibility of 8,000? 8,000 ADUs over time. That's a good question, <laughs> which I don't have an answer. I don't think that there probably is. I mean, I, I did a little research, and I know Portland, Oregon has been kind of a mover and shaker on this oh, ADU yeah. thing for, for years. Well, they've been building them. They've been, they've been building new construction with ADUs, yeah, is, yeah, is my understanding. Yeah. And they've been tracking them. And, and frankly, they haven't found that it's that easy to get them in they're still they're doing all kinds of things to try and encourage yeah. them but you know cost is you the know, cost kind of is, is the cost is mm -hmm. a big mm -hmm. you know a big concern mm -hmm. or a big if, issue if you're a, an older adult and you have some equity in your home well oh, that was the other thing that i heard is that financing options are limited is that the case yeah, it's, the home equity line home equity yeah, and cash was, was about all yeah it yeah. was that's yeah, there's no financing, mortgage financing in place to do that. You think that'll change? That would be a great idea. Wouldn't it? Yeah. I wonder who. Huh. Lenders, okay. take note. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah, very good. Yeah. You know, and the other issue that I heard is that what about, will schools get overcrowded? Or are they overcrowded now, you know? So... I can tell you that there's a community where they built a very large apartment complex. And... The town was, was concerned. What is this going to do uh -huh. to our schools? Hundreds of units, it may be bought, brought less than 10 children into uh -huh. the school. So I don't think the ADUs are going to necessarily increase a large percentage of children. Mm -hmm. As you said, it, if it's, you know, a senior looking to stay in their home, uh -huh. um, it's, it's not likely to. Uh-huh. Okay. Okay. School populations, always, there's they, always an influx. They go up, they go down, they open schools, they close schools. Yeah. 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 Well, and so the thing we're, we're sitting here and we're talking, we just don't know. You don't know. We don't know. What we know is that we have a housing shortage. We have a housing shortage. And what we, we know is that we want to address that. Yeah. And, of course, then... People need a place to live, and there just isn't, there isn't that, even with rentals, uh -huh. housing to buy, families, mm -hmm. grandkids, mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. children. Do you have, you know, as, as a realtor, do you have people that are actually looking for 
uh, a a single family home that has an ADU yeah, or has that potential? Yeah, is that something that people always, are interested in? Yeah, there's always, I, I, we always have clients of, you know, we're looking for something with an in-law, looking for something we mm. can turn into an in-law. Um, and a lot of times those properties, whereas they weren't necessarily approved as an in-law, it's, you know, a section carved out, it's not marketed as such. I think we're going to see it's easier to find those in the advertisements because, you know, people are going to have the approvals for them and uh -huh. it's, it's, it's going to be easier for people. But there's always people looking for multi-generational homes. Yeah. Yes. Oh, yeah. Yeah. Uh -huh. They have their mom coming, looking for something with a first floor bedroom. And then this is good, too, because... People do want their privacy, whether, yeah, they're, yeah. whether they have their children, their parents, their grandchildren. It's nice to have the separation of space, and that's what allows you to do it. Indeed, to be connected and when you need yes. or when you want, but yeah. then to, yeah, to, to have your own space. Yeah. It's important. Yeah. Yeah, it's very important. Uh -huh. Yeah. Uh -huh. Well, good. Yeah. Okay, well, what else should we, uh, what else should we talk about regarding these? There's, there's so much to talk about. You know, I'm hoping that we start seeing some more of these. I'm hoping that for our buyers uh -huh. that we're finding options and that there, uh -huh. it does increase the availability of housing for people mm -hmm. to move into. Yeah. Well, and I'm hoping that it's another option for older adults as opposed to, you know, assisted living or some of the large, you know, for-profit, Yeah. you know, I, I, you know, I speak with a lot of seniors that do not want to leave the home uh -huh. that they raised their family in. Uh -huh. Of course, there's many that are the happy to go out and do something different, but this is really a good opportunity for them to stay on their property, stay in the community that, that they familiar. love, that they want to be part of. Um, you know, the, the taxes become overwhelming, the, the water sewer bills, the costs of living in that house by yourself gets expensive. So oh, the utilities, is, yeah. The utilities. So it's a really good opportunity for seniors to, to stay where they are, age in place. And if they need to have that single level living, they have that as well. Mm -hmm. So, which, which is really good. I like that. Yeah. I think that this is it's really appealing. good. Yeah, it's really good progress, I think, for the state. We have the Northeast has, is the strongest ADUs. And this one here is, it's, it's, oh. it's, it's really, it's nice to see this. I think I did read that Maine has some kind of a state ADU, and so does, is it Vermont or New Hampshire? It's or? not New Hampshire. I'm not yeah. sure about Vermont, but I'm licensed in New Hampshire, and it is not uh -huh. by state. And, okay. you know, I'm really hopeful that that's something that they start to consider, especially with Massachusetts yeah. doing it. Yeah. We, I see a large influx of people moving from Massachusetts to New Hampshire, uh -huh. especially in retirement just due to the, you know, advantages of the, you know, the income tax. Oh, yeah, yeah. So that would... Yeah, yeah. Well, and I imagine in time, neighborhoods will get more comfortable once they see them come in and that it really doesn't throw a, you know, a big... Sometimes it's the fear of the unknown yeah, and not yeah. understanding and just expecting the worst. Mm -hmm. But I think it's it's good. There's There's... Plenty of neighborhoods in Beverly that will support it. Mm -hmm. and, you know, even if it's converting a, a garage that's grandfathered in without uh -huh. those setbacks. Well, there's a garage down the street from me that I'm like, oh, I would love to live <laughs> in the top of that. <laughs> it's, really, it's really cool. Yeah. Well, how does, uh, how does someone, if they decide that this is something that they want to do, what is their first step? They have to find a reliable... Contractor? Well, the first, we the, yes, you definitely need to find a reliable contractor. You need to reach out to the building department and it, figure out what figure the, what you can do with the property. You know, if you're looking to do a, a standalone, you know, what what are your options with that? So those are the first things that you want to do is you know work with a contractor and then find out what you can do. Uh huh. Um, is, uh -huh. Wonder what kind of time? Well, it, I suppose it just depends on the and housing it, industry and what's going yeah, on. Yeah, I mean, housing costs of, to build is still pretty high. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Interesting. I don't suppose a yurt would work. <laughs> <laughs> I'm not sure if that would meet. <laughs> I don't think a yurt has its own. Uh... <laughs> yeah, I don't think so. I think the heating would be a little difficult in that. <laughs> yeah. It'd be kind of cool, but. 
Okay. So, um, okay, so just to recap, I think we said that, so the owner does not have to live on the property? The owner does have to live the on the property. The owner does have the to home, live on the, the property. The owner does need to live on the property. And now, is that part of the Massachusetts state? That is currently part of the Beverly the ADU. Beverly yes, ADUs. I do. I'm not positive about the state. That's a good question. Um, well, I know that they put out one of those uh, model bylaws. Yeah. And I'm like, well, this is very interesting. And of course, and AARP has been working on this for a long time, and I'm pretty sure it's what AARP, you know, kind of gave them. Yeah. Uh, and um, it's. Uh, it talks about, well, how the, you know, all the potential possible, you know, I mean, there are a lot of decisions that municipalities need to make, yeah. you know, and Beverly, it sounds like, has made them. And so it's really a question of how, whether there are any differences with the, the state law, does the state law impact what Beverly already has going? Or yes. Not? So it, it starts, so we know that the, 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 the housing bond bill was voted in August 6th. Yeah. It actually goes into a place November 4th, which puts us to May 3rd, 2025, before the, this whole bill takes place into Massachusetts. Okay. So we have a little bit of time still, but at that point, that bill should supersede some of the, the, the ADU laws in these towns. Again, Beverly's has been, Beverly has amended theirs to mm -hmm. increase the usability of it. Being allowed to rent it, it was mm -hmm. a, a, a big bonus. These ADUs, they increase the values of people's homes. It's oh, although for, yeah, 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 you know, it's it, uh, although it might be a cost to put it in. Assuming somebody is looking to do this in a home that they're occupying by themselves, it's it's a good investment. Uh -huh. There uh -huh. are some grants as well. I'm not cool. sure how much with different towns that will assist. I don't know what the requirements are, but I would say somebody looking to do it would want to look with their town and see if there's any grants and if they qualify mm -hmm. for it. So then it's just a call to the mayor's office? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> where, where, where do I find that information? Again, I start with the, the building department. <laughs> building department. Start okay. with the building department. Community <laughs> development and towns. Uh -huh. Uh -huh. But definitely, you know, City Hall would be the place to start to ask for those questions. Okay. Okay. Very good. Let me check and see if... Um, yeah, There's yeah. anything that we didn't. Well, we're looking we're looking pretty good here, I think. Um, any other key issues that we should think about? We talked about schools, parking, size. Cost. Who has to live? The, the cost. cost. That's the cost. cost. is a big yeah. one. Well, you know, I guess what I'm hoping is that it just does give... Um, our audience, some, you know, some, some, options. some, you know, kind of things to roll around in their mind about yeah. potentials and possibilities and yeah. and all that because you know it seems like it could be very appealing. You know, that combination of privacy but also closeness. Yeah. You know, I think is. Uh, is is good to have your security family security wise yeah, security whether it's family whether it's a renter just for the straight income uh -huh. a caretaker all uh -huh. of those options really just give people choices to staying in their communities mm -hmm. well, which is good. needed yeah 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 well and it could be it's it's limited to one am i right that that's is correct that's You're limited to one and it can't be used as um a short-term rental. Oh, well, that's so I can. That's see, good. Yeah, I think that that might be concerns in some of the neighborhoods. Uh -huh. That uh -huh. well, I know in an environment where I have come from, Coeur d'Alene, Idaho, you know, Airbnbs have just been taken over. You know, the a large part of the downtown area and yeah. the neighbors who are, you know, I mean, it's it and those does are change. those are vacation homes. It yeah. doesn't alleviate the housing. Yeah, problem. Yeah, yeah, and it doesn't. Uh, yeah, it doesn't support the neighborhood. Yeah, really. although the, you know the financials might be good for somebody. There's a lot of other considerations to be uh -huh. had with that. Uh -huh. Okay, well, very good. Yeah. Okay, let's see. Um, we talked about tiny houses. You like those tiny houses? <laughs> well, 
You know, mine would probably end up being very expensive because what appeals to me is how uniquely they find space within those for all different things, yeah. you know, so that there's like no wasted space. Yeah. And of course that's, you know, when you have a smaller home, that's, that does yeah. drive the costs up. Of course. You know, when you have, I don't know what, your stairs serve multi-purpose for, yeah. you know, closet yeah. or, you know, drawers or whatever. I think I said it before, we have a lot of um, split level and raised ranch style homes, which I think are the perfect opportunity for that. And many of them I see with two kitchens now. Uh -huh. So it's, you know, uh -huh. it really is a, hopefully that increases people's ability to do uh -huh. that uh -huh. and utilizing those houses uh -huh. for it. Do you see houses that have two master, master beds? Yes, we're seeing more and more of that. That also seems yeah. kind of interesting. The first floor bedrooms are always desirable yeah. and hard to, hard to obtain. Or you have the first floor bedroom and maybe not a full bath on the yeah. first floor, yeah. which... If it's you no ha good. It's not. That doesn't solve the the no. purpose of why a lot of people are looking for the first floor yeah. bedroom. Yeah. Mm, good. Okay. So. It sounds like Beverly's ready to. I mean, it's it's set. Yeah. Beverly's set. Be of course, Beverly. There is a lot of there is a lot of building going on. There's a lot of buildings. Yes. <laughs> but but not necessarily the same building that seniors are looking for. Right, right. A lot yeah. of them, the high-rise apartment might not appeal. They want to stay in their neighborhoods. They want to stay in this home. And this is a great option to look at ways to do that. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Well, it sounds good. I, uh, yeah, those tall high-rises aren't too appealing, especially if a dog, you know. Yeah. And a lot of, I do, so a lot of seniors have pets of some kind yeah. that, you know, you want to take out. There's a, a need for them. As uh -huh. I said, all housing helps the housing crisis, whether it's rentals, large homes, small homes, and ADU. It's just another home, uh -huh. and it helps us meet that yeah. the need that we have. In the, in the governor's uh, website that talks about, you know, uh, this bond, uh, talks about the challenge of, you know, companies having workers and saying, you know, hey, we're going to have to pull up stakes unless we uh, can find housing yeah. for Worker employees. housing. So, yeah, a lot yeah. of investors are buying multifamilies uh -huh. specifically for ho worker housing. It's, uh -huh. it's, uh -huh. a, it's a large need. Well, it's, you know, it, you get used to a community the way it is, and then it's kind of hard to change. But the fact is that everything changes. Everything changes. Everything changes. Not everybody loves change. No. <laughs> but... You know, it's it changed for the is. good. This is yeah. for the, the, the better good yeah. of yeah. people yeah. of Massachusetts, okay. for sure. Well, that sounds good. I, I do want to thank you for coming thank in today. Thank you for inviting and, me. Great and, to see uh, you again. And you know, thoughts. super yeah. excited to do yeah. this. Yeah. Well, Hopefully, I'm, I added some insight. Yeah. Good. Yeah. Well, and yeah, maybe we'll revisit this again sometime. Yeah. You know, it'd be interesting to see if. Just really, what does happen? You yeah, know, and, over, you know, how many? Two years from now, how well, many? Well, I guess you track the permits. You would track yeah. the permits for ADUs to figure out yeah. uh, whether things increase or stay the same yeah. or what really happens. So it sounds good. Well, thank you so much. Thank you for having me. All right. <laughs> bye bye.